Okay, so this uh, ladder problem, it's it's like a it's like a type of problem we get in these equilibrium units. Um, but really, there's nothing specific about it in terms of new knowledge. It's applying the idea of balanced forces, translational, like force in the x direction is all the forces in the x direction are equal to zero, and all the forces in the y direction add up to zero, and that the torques are balanced, and that when we calculate torque, we have to use the perpendicular force acting on the lever arm. So nothing new in, in that regard, but it's good to go through one of these. So let's see here. Consider a ladder leaning against a wall. So this is looking sideways at a ladder, and we're saying here that the there's friction along the bottom where the ladder is leaning, or where the ladder is contacting the floor. There's friction, and that's what's keeping the ladder um, in place. And to make this the problem a little bit simpler, we're saying there's no friction on this wall here. So no no friction there. That's that can slide as much as it wants, but there's friction here, and that's what is keeping the ladder um, in position. So the first thing you'd want to do with this, like any other problem, I think, is identify your forces. Uh, the other thing is that this is not a massless ladder. It's a, it's a ladder that actually weighs 10 kilograms. So in, we're going to say that's uniform. Therefore, that mass is going to act in the center of gravity, right in the middle of the beam. So I'm going to call that FG. Um, there's no friction here, but there will be a normal force. So the wall is pushing out. Let me make that a bit bigger, actually. Uh, no, that's fine. I'm going to call that FN1. I'll Actually, I'll just call it N1. And the reason I call it N1 is because there's also N here. So I'm going to call this... Oops. Call that N2. Um, and then, again, there's uh, there is friction here. So if you imagine what would happen if if this top end of the ladder slid down, that would make the bottom end slid th slide this way. And that's not happening. Friction is preventing it, so that means the friction must be pointed in this direction. And that those are all the forces. We could identify some links on this drawing as well. Let's see here. So it's five meters long, so, so we could draw some distances on this, although it'll be kind of hard. I don't want it to get too crowded. But if the ladder is 5 meters long, then this would be 2.5 meters. And then the whole thing's 5. So I think those are the only distance we need to know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to redraw um, these forces. So it's easier because we, we, we have to do some tricks. So I'm going to um, use some component idea here. So there's the ladder. That's N1, N2, force of friction, that's FG. Okay, let's get some components going here. And this is 60 degrees. All right. <clears throat> if that's 60 degrees, then this is 60 degrees. And... If this is 60, then this must be 30 degrees. So there we, we know our angles now. And actually this would be 60 degrees. Okay, so let's draw some components here. Oh wait, one more angle thing. This is 30. So let me do my components. This 60 is made up of a perpendicular force and a parallel force. So this is N1 perpendicular and this is N1 parallel. All right, then there's, this is N2 parallel and this is N2 perpendicular. Um, That is FG perpendicular, and this is FG parallel. 
So we now have some, we all we have our forces that we can calculate torque. So I'm going to say I can pick any point to calculate torque. I'm going to pick this as the point because it has two forces, two unknown forces on it. So I'm going to pick that as the pivot point, and then I don't have to worry about N2 and force of friction. So FG parallel is making the torque go this way. N1 perpendicular is making it go that way. So those two torques are equal and opposite. It's kind of this idea that all the clockwise torques add up to all the counterclockwise torques. So clockwise, that would be FG perpendicular times the distance, which was um, 2.5 meters. And that's equal to N1 perpendicular times 5 meters. Okay. So we're getting somewhere, and we can actually we can find FG perpendicular actually because we know uh, maybe we'll do it here. FG is equal to we're told it's ten kilograms. So that's equal to ninety-eight newtons, uh, and then we can use some trig here. Um, FG is the FG perpendicular is equal to Fg times cos 60 degrees. Cos 60, I'm pretty sure that's a half actually. So this is going to be, you can do it on your calculator if you want, but that's going to be um, 49 newtons. Okay, so we can calculate N1 perpendicular. N1 perpendicular is equal to Fg, which is 49. Oops. times 2.5 divided by 5. So it's half 49 again. So that's equal to, that's 25 or 24.8 newtons. Oh wait, what am I saying? 24.5. 20, okay, um, so we know N1 perpendicular. Now, actually, at this point, we're kind of we can already know we already know what uh, the force of friction is because we know that the sum of forces in the x direction has to add up to zero, and there is only two horizontal forces on this. N one is equal to F G or sorry F F. So therefore, force of friction is twenty four point five newtons. So the last thing we have to do is figure out N2. And N2 we can figure out as well quite easily because the sum of all the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. Therefore, N2 is equal to F, Fg. These are the, those are the only two vertical forces. So N2 is equal to, what did we say? It was 98 newtons. Okay. Um, and then the question is asking for what mu is. So mu, force of friction, or coefficient of friction, is force of friction divided by the normal force. So that's equal to 24.5 divided by 98. And we already kind of did this calculation. Uh, if you double 24.5, you get 49, and you double 49 again, you get 98. So this is 0 0.25. Once again, you can do that on your calculator if you want, but that's what you will get. So there you go. So the key principles here are, I'll, I'll kind of do it in the order I did. First thing I did was I drew the forces on the beam. I think that's like, helpful. I think it's useful to do that. The second thing I did was I did the force diagram or free body diagram. The third thing I did was draw the parallel and perpendicular forces. The fourth thing I did is found torque. Uh, or, or I balanced, I, I did the idea of balancing torque. Then um, I balanced the horizontal forces. Oops. And then I balanced the vertical forces. Now, when you solve different problems that's not always going to be in this order particularly four five and six could be in different orders but i think you can always do one two and three i think those are always good places to start 
Okay. Um, and if you're not... Oh, and then lastly, I figured out coefficient of friction. If you're not sure which where to start, like should you start with Fx or Fy, it doesn't really matter. You can just start and keep finding a new number till you can't do anything else and then move on to the other something else. So you could start with this and let's suppose both of these things were unknowns. That's okay. Then you'd maybe try do, doing Fx next. And maybe that would tell you something. So unless you're an expert, you don't have to be too concerned about where you're going to start as long as you do things that are correct with correct physics. Alrighty, good luck.